snaps give us the ability to use elements in our scene as anchor points to snap to. This means we can use geometry, helper objects, 3ds max grids and more to help us carefully and precisely craft and build our models and environments. Let's take a look at how they work by making use of our snaps.max scene loaded of course from the working files folder. We have in our scene a very basic 2D layout plan for an environment tabletop mockup that we want to build. Along with some rough placeholder geometry that can help us block out camera placement and set up composition before the final model building phase is entered into. We also have some imaginary instructions that we are going to pretend give us some very specific layout instructions for the scene, ones that need to be adhered to thoroughly. Let's make a start then by placing the trees. Our notes tell us that we need to create eight trees that all have to be set 180 centimeters apart. First of all then, let's create some points in the scene that we can actually snap to. In this instance, we can set up our home grid to do this for us. We will need to come up to the main toolbar and right mouse click on any of the first three snap button icons. Then in the pop-up dialog, we can come across to the home grid tab and set the grid spacing value to 20 centimeters and then press enter. While we are here, we can also increase the grid extent value to 85. This simply gives us a much larger home grid in the viewport with which to work. As this dialog has no OK button, we can close it by clicking the X in the top right. If my maths are correct then, to space our trees 180 centimeters apart means we need to place one on every ninth grid point. Of course, having the visual grid to work with, we could now proceed to place these by eye, but as that would be prone to less accuracy and would defeat the purpose of this video, let's use snaps to get everything in order. We can enable the snap tools from the main toolbar where, as you can see, we actually have not one, but four snap tools available. The snaps, angle snap, percent snap, and finally the spinner snap toggle buttons. Although we will only be working with the main snaps and angle snap toggles, the same basic workflow applies to all the snap tools. To set our trees up, we want to enable the snaps toggle, which we can also do by hitting the S key. We need to make sure in this instance that we are snapping to grid points. So let's right click the button to access our grid and snap settings and uncheck edge segment and instead put a check in the grid points option. Let's enable our move tool by pressing the W key and you will notice as we move our cursor over the home grid, we now get a yellow box snapping to each grid point as soon as we are within a certain tolerance. To get a better view, let's click to select our tree object and then down in the bottom right of the UI, click the zoom extent selected button. Then using the zoom tool, we'll just zoom out a little and then pan the view if we need to. So with our tree object selected, we can now hold down the shift key to create a copy and move our tree nine grid spaces to the right. Because we are using the snap tool, counting this off is nice and easy to do. Once we release the mouse, we can set the clone type to instance, the number to seven, and then click OK. Let's jump into a camera view now by pressing the C key so as to get a better view of how things are shaping up. As you can see, we now have our eight trees evenly spaced at 180 centimeters each. We also have here four support columns that need to be placed under our pseudo building. The four green point helper objects have already been placed in the positions that these columns need to sit in. So let's hold down the shift key and right click in the view to access our snaps quad menu. In here, we need to select the pivot option. Let's move the four posts in the same manner as we did the trees, snapping them perfectly into place with a simple click and drag. As we can see, this time, as well as the pillars snapping to grid points, they also snap to the pivot points of the helper objects. To place one last object, we can make use of vertex snaps. Again, we need to enable these in our options. Let's right click our snap tool and turn off pivot point and grid points and turn on vertex. And then after closing the grid and snaps dialog, simply use the move tool to position the main building. We will grab a corner vertex and place it on the corner vertex of one of our columns. 
Although we have positioned our building, at this moment in time, it is not lining up with the columns. It clearly needs to be rotated by 90 degrees to properly sit in place. We could just simply rotate the object and try to move our mouse as little as possible to get our rotation value at 90 degrees. We could even type it in numerically, but seeing as though we also have snaps when it comes to rotation, let's use angle snap. We want to first of all enable our rotate tool by pressing the E key, and then press the S key to turn off our normal snapping options. And then either come up to the toolbar and press the angle snap button, or simply press the A keyboard shortcut. Now as we rotate the building, we snap our rotation every 5 degrees. If we wanted to change this amount, we would right click one of our first three snap buttons on the main toolbar, and inside the snap settings dialog box, come over to the option tab. Here we can change the amount in terms of degrees that our angle snap will snap to. Now that we have our building correctly oriented, let's close our grid and snap settings dialog box and then turn on our Snap and Move tools by pressing the S and W keys. Now we will retry our Vertex to Vertex Snap. Our building is now in the correct position as well as the correct orientation. Although we have used a pretend set of instructions for our scene, it is not uncommon to have these kind of guidelines when working in the 3D industry. As we have seen, Snaps can make adhering to such instructions a fairly simple process. Even if we are working on our own projects, oftentimes the use of our snapping tools will add an accuracy and professionalism that placing objects by eye simply will not do. And finally, and most importantly, a huge benefit of using snaps, along with some fixed measurements that we have seen demonstrated, is the speed with which we are able to set up our scene. Snaps are definitely a tool that we will want to make good use of.